Did any of the following actually happen as described in these scary stories? Did Dogman follow me across state lines? Dear Scary Stories NYC, I had a traumatic experience seeing a dogman or werewolf type entity at my friend's house in Michigan. When I hopped on the plane to fly back where I live in Pennsylvania, I thought my ordeal was over. Things can never be that easy though. When it comes to the dog man, I grew up with a best friend we can call Paul, not his real name, and we remained close friends straight up through college. After we both graduated though, he left to pursue a job offer in Michigan, and we became long distance friends, not quite as close as we once had been. After he got married and settled into a new house and a new life, he invited me to come out for a visit anytime I'd like. This was before the pandemic when freedom of movement and association were still recognized as constitutional rights. It was great seeing Paul again, but his wife? Not so much. Let's call her It, the terror from beyond space, because I witnessed no human characteristics on that thing. It wouldn't come to get me from the airport. It complained when its slave brought me back. It tried to take up every second of Paul's time to prevent us from having our reunion. It made dinner for two and told me that she thought I had brought my own food with me. And the only conversation I had with it one-on-one involved it telling me what was wrong with my race and gender, two things I have no choice about. Although I had taken a week off my job for the visit, by the third day I was already in contact with my airline, trying to find the most affordable way to get on a sooner flight home. I needed to bolt from that hellhole. My poor friend Paul, he had lost his freedom. About two or three years before we all did, I suppose. I felt a bit sad for him, but I mourned our friendship even more. I could tell I wouldn't be able to know my buddy any longer. At least, not until he got divorced, or, you know, hired a hitman to deal with it. That night, It demanded Paul take It out to dinner alone, and as I sat alone myself in It's kitchen, opening her mayo and jam jars to express my gratitude by spitting inside them, I heard a horrible sound outside like a dog in great pain. I thought it was a wounded animal, so I ran to the kitchen window, unprepared, for what I was about to witness. There was a large man there, standing at the corner of their backyard in a dark spot so I could barely make him out. I looked around for that weeping and yowling canine, but the only living thing out there besides plant life was that figure. I stood there, at the window, continuing to hear the awful sounds, unsure what, if anything, I could do about it. I figured that man over there must be doing something to a dog to cause this horrible noise. So I walked to the back door, flung it open dramatically and angrily, and I shouted in the deepest and toughest sounding voice I could manage, Hey! You! Come over here now! Out of all the actions I have taken in my entire life, I think I regret this one the most. I once mouthed off a cop and spent the night in a county lockup, But I don't regret that as much as I regret this. The figure came stomping out of the shadows into the relatively brighter yet still dim lighting of Paul's backyard. And that was when I could see that this figure was not in fact a guy at all. Slamming the door shut and locking every lock on it, I retreated into the kitchen, going over in my mind what I had just witnessed and listening to the awful wailing, now located just outside the back door. That wasn't a man bothering a dog. That was a man who was a dog, and he seemed to have arrived pre-bothered. I'll try to describe it to you. I can still picture it. I've seen it in multiple nightmares over the years since then as well. Seven feet tall on the outside, six foot eight conservative estimate. Reddish brown fur, but very dark reddish brown. Eyes glowing like tiny flashlights trying to cut laser holes in my soul. 
The ears stood up on its head like Batman ears, almost too tall to be dog ears. But that's what they were, though. They were the ears of a dog up on top of a largely humanoid figure. People ask me about the legs. Did it walk on dog legs or human legs? For the life of me, I just don't recall, as strange as that might sound. I remember the eyes and the ears. I remember its great height and its great width. I remember how muscle-bound it seemed. And I remember that its mouth had so many large teeth that it sort of looked like a hairy alligator mouth. The teeth were at least as large and plentiful as those of a gator or a croc. But this had to have been either a mammal or a marsupial because it was covered in fur from head to foot. Or from head on down, I should say, since I didn't really notice the lower legs or feet. Paul's wife and master made him cut their back lawn regularly, so I can't say the feet were hidden in the tall grass, as I can say about my second sighting, which I'll get to later. I just think I was so stunned about what was happening, and I was so terrified of the monster that its bodily anatomy was just not an important subject in that moment. I remember running to the center of the house and standing in a doorway. I think that's what you're supposed to do during earthquakes. Clearly I was panicking, and I didn't know what I should be doing just then and there. The sounds of pained howling continued. It was extremely disturbing to listen to, both because of how pathetic the beast sounded, and because of its volume and grating noise. Like chalk on a blackboard mixed with hurt puppy turned up to eleven. I felt stupid standing there, and I racked my mind for what I should be doing instead when I noticed the howling and yowling had stopped. Just like that. Confused and curious, I made my way to the kitchen to cautiously peer out the windows. I saw nothing out of the ordinary, but it was dark out there. I listened quietly, and I couldn't hear the dog sounds any longer, not even from a great distance. And then, suddenly, with absolutely no warning whatsoever, Paul and it came home, scaring the living daylights out of me. I was in a pretty bad way, but I doubted I would be able to explain to either of them why. I didn't really want to hear it attack and belittle what I had just gone through. I decided to go up to the guest bedroom and pull the covers over my head. If the monster would be seen again on that night, I figured, it'd be by those two. In the morning, I left the house as Paul and his wife were having breakfast without me. Paul asked me where I was going and I pointed to the cab I had called for. He asked me where the cab was taking me, and I said the airport. He walked me outside apologizing and trying to ease the tension, but not asking me to reconsider and stay. He didn't ask me why I was leaving. He knew why. My final words to him were, Contact me when the warden commutes your sentence. I remember in the cab on the way back to the airport looking for a podcast to listen to. I downloaded something I was unfamiliar with. Two men were discussing Carl Jung and Jungian archetypes. My mind wandered as I wondered if that was what I had seen. Probably the appearance of the werewolf thing was in some way related to my experiences with that alleged woman my friend had been imprisoned by. Maybe I saw the monster because she was a monster to me. Maybe that dogman was the real her, the true monster underlying the apparent human. In any case, I felt a sense of relief, certain that whatever that dog-headed thing was, it was tied to that property, and I was heading far away from there. I was, I felt, leaving two monsters behind. By the time I got home, it was pretty late and very dark out. I was starving, so I popped something frozen into the microwave, then scarfed it down. As soon as that food was done... I was going to wash up and go to bed. I remember staring blankly out of my kitchen window as I ate the chicken nuggets or whatever it was, and I remember seeing something looking back at me from the shadows. I was definitely seeing an animal because I was seeing eye shine. I had seen deer walking on the edges of my yard before, and I wondered if that was what was out there looking back at me. As if in answer to my curiosity, the creature stepped forward and revealed itself as a very, very large dog. 
Oh no, I thought, or maybe I said it out loud. This dog looked an awful lot like that werewolf thing I had seen. I rubbed my eyes, hoping it would go away, but it didn't. Instead, the creature sort of leaned backward and upward, and in one graceful movement, it rose to an upright bipedal position, bearing its immense teeth in the process. I dropped the food and the plate, and I ran up to my bedroom. I literally slept with the covers over my head that night. That looked like the exact same creature I had seen at Paul's house. There's no way it could have reached my house faster than the airplane I took. Sure, the dogman didn't have to wait for his luggage, but even so, it's just not possible. If that wasn't the same creature, then what had I seen? One of my friends suggested to me that the dogman had attached itself to me, which implies that it's more of a ghost or spirit than an animal. I don't really know how I feel about that theory. Another friend said that they were really two dogmen, and that they probably didn't really look that much alike. One was a Michigan dogman, he suggested, and the other was a Pennsylvania dogman. I saw both in the darkness, and that might be why I thought I was seeing the same thing both times. Even my friend with this theory had to admit that the chances of two of the rarest animals in the world revealing themselves to me on two successive days would be astronomically small. So I don't really know if I buy that theory either. Of course, a third theory would be that I'm losing my mind. I resent that this is the simplest and most logical theory, by the way. So, how have I chosen to deal with all this? The answer is I sort of haven't. I just avert my eyes from looking out the windows onto my property now. I keep the shades closed at night. I just don't want to know what's out there any longer. As much as I try not to think about it, I have to admit I'm still really very curious about this. I wish somebody could tell me for sure. Did Dogman follow me? Across state lines? Don't go anywhere, we've got another all new Dogman story in a second. But first, I need to thank today's executive producer, Todd Graves. Todd Graves is a good name for horror. He's a roarer and a scorer and a major explorer. He's a human, not an anthropod. He's Mr. Graves with first name Todd. Please join us in thanking Todd Graves for making this episode possible. In exchange for his kind contributions, we share with him the links to our secret uncensored dogman stories far too wild to tell on this channel. We'd love to share them with you too. Just join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com or do what Todd Graves did and click the join link below this or any of our videos. And now for that second dogman story I promised you. This one happened more recently than that last one. And we call it, I can't work at home because of Dogman. Dear Scary Stories NYC, Dogman is a scary mofo, and I know this because he constantly appears on my personal property to remind me of just this thing. He shows up morning, noon, and night. I don't know if or when he ever sleeps. The only place he won't show up is in front of one of my game cams so I can get some proof that he's here. In fact, he's so completely annoying and distracting that I can no longer work at home because of the dogman. To be honest, the harassment by this dogman or family of dogmen started back before the pandemic, but I had no idea that was what the problem was. In the beginning, I never saw the creature or creatures. I just heard rapping on the walls of my house at night. Sometimes it would just be one rap and other times it would sound like someone knocking on my front door, except it didn't come from my front door. It came from one of the side walls or the back. Usually it would wake me up in the middle of the night, but once in a while it would interrupt me earlier in the evening when I was watching a YouTube video or eating dinner. I was gone by 6 a.m. for work and not back till after 6 p.m. in those days, so I was only really there at night. Once the pandemic hit and I was sent to work from home, I soon discovered the phenomena took place during the day, too. It didn't take long for me to find out the true identity or identities of the culprit or culprits once I started getting quicker in responding to the disturbances. 
Now, before I actually saw the dog man, I had all sorts of theories as to what might be banging on my house. It might have been an annoying neighbor, I thought. I couldn't think of anyone I was feuding with, but still, it might have been some teenager, maybe. One that ran away fast, or faster than I could get out of bed, at least. Another theory was that I had raccoons living in my walls, but I really didn't think that was the answer, as it didn't explain the sounds very well. They must have been made by something larger and stronger than a raccoon. That was when my mind shifted to the paranormal, and I started to wonder if I might be getting haunted by a ghost. In fact, I forgot all about this, but just reminded myself. One night, when the rapping began, I tried asking it questions as though I were on a ghost TV show. I thought it might be communicating with me, or at least attempting to. I suppose it was trying to communicate, but the message was a very hostile one. Needless to say, I got no answers to my questions. Are you the spirit of someone who used to live in this house? I asked. How dumb. I was talking to a dog man who had no doubt already run away. So, the first time I actually saw the perpetrator, I was working at home and taking a break. It was a sunny day, just a little after noon, and it was very clear and bright. I heard a thump, and without pausing to think for even a second, I jumped across the room and threw open the kitchen door. That was when I saw it. The sighting was mega brief, but incredibly clear. I saw a big gray werewolf run on its hind legs, away from my house and behind some bushes. Then, as I listened, I heard it scuttle through the leaves and disappear onto my neighbor's property, which is very overgrown. I screamed. I had no question about what I had seen. It was a monster like from the movies, and I screamed. I didn't start screaming until I heard it run away, and I didn't stop until I ran out of breath. It was a delayed reaction, but a very intense one. I wasn't being haunted by ghosts. I was cursed by a werewolf. Or a dogman, which was something I had not been familiar with. I don't honestly know what to call this thing, or these things. It could very well be more than one. If it is only one, then he must not need much sleep, as he or it attacks literally at any time of the day or night. That was not the last time I saw that thing or one of them. They are always large, always gray-furred, and always bipedal. I read a lot about Dogman recently online, and there are frequent mentions about how muscular they are. This one, or this family is not, really. It's more like a thin man, but very tall. Its legs seem muscular, but not that much more than an average dog, considering it has to carry the weight of the entire animal on those two hind legs. I would say it seems each time I see it, like a cross between a basketball player and a greyhound. When I see it, I just see a glimpse each time, so I do wonder if I'm seeing only one, or if this is actually harassment, by an entire clan of these creatures. I wasn't getting proper rest and it reached the point where my coworkers actually asked me if I was sick when we would have meetings using Zoom. Finally, I told my boss that my home is just too distracting to work in. I wanted to know if I could work from the office instead. Since nobody else was, she said okay and that relieved much of the problem for me. Now I only have to deal with Dogman at night so I run both white and brown noise in my bedroom. I still hear the knocking sometimes, but I pretend I don't, and I never investigate anymore. I know what the answer is going to be. It's a terrifying answer, and there's nothing I can do about it. And so I guess I have Dogman to thank for the fact that I get to sit in the ergodynamic chair at my office, enjoying cool air conditioning in the summer, and pleasantly warm heat in the winter. Silence. All the time. Pure. Sweet. Beautiful silence. If it were not for that heinous demon from hell haunting my property, I would not have the huge computer screens that I currently work with.
Sure, I have to put the stupid BS mask on when security or maintenance are around, but usually I'm alone, working in absolute privacy and luxury. And it's all due to the fact that I can't work at home because of Dog Man. Thanks for watching till the end. If you liked what you saw, please consider clicking like on the video or sharing it. You can become a channel member by clicking the join link below. Then you can check our community page to find the links to 10 hours or more of secret, uncensored Dogman stories too wild to be told on this channel. Your other option is to join our paid subscribers club at peterbernard.com. That's Peter's homemade club where he will personally email you the links as well as occasional secret club messages. You may also be included as an executive producer in a future episode. You have a scary experience you want to tell us about? You can email us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or else call our Scary Stories voicemail hotline at 804 Less Scary. The machine cuts off every few minutes, so if you have a long story, please keep calling back and we'll piece it together later on. Good night and have a scary tomorrow. Come back for more scary stories.